Well, good morning. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. If this is your first time here today, I want to welcome you into the sanctuary for Manor from Heaven Ministries. I'm Overseer Michael Armstrong, and you are truly in the place to be. Where the Spirit of the Lord dwells, there is liberty, and that's what we're here today. We're giving God praise. We're free to lift our hands. We're free to open our mouth. We're free to give God a shout of glory. I don't know what you've been through during this past week, but this week, this week, was no reason at all that you should have not been able to give God some praise. This is one of the holiest weeks of the year. We started off with the Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry. We went right away up into uh, uh, um, Wednesday, which was the day where... Uh, um, Judas uh, betrayed Jesus. He looked for a way to betray Jesus. We had a uh, mundane Thursday where we broke bread at the Lord's table and, and, and Jesus began to do in the foot washings. We had the Good Friday celebration. Hallelujah. And we're just thanking God, even in advance, for the resurrection that is soon to come. Hallelujah. Now, when I say soon to come, I want some of you to already know that didn't know the resurrection had come. Amen. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been already. But we're talking about during this week, the uh, the festivities, the excitement that, that allowed us to build through this week. Uh, I, I want to open us up with a word of prayer as people are entering into the sanctuary. We have family members that come in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They come in from the continent of Africa. They come in from the continent of North America. And we just thank God for the Isles of the Philippines that come to join us. We thank God for Australia that comes in to join us. We thank God for you. We thank God from all the way up in uh, Nigeria, uh, uh, Ghana. We thank God for uh, Zimbabwe. We thank God for Zambia, for Kenya, for Nairobi, for, for we thank God for Mobasa, Kenya. We thank God for you. We thank God for Lusaka, Zambia. We thank God as you're coming into fellowship with us today from uh, South Africa. You're coming in from Cape Town. They join us from Johannesburg, from Pretoria, from Durban. We just thank God for our family members that find not of themselves to come to fellowship with us here on the continent of North America, that from far away as Canada, all the way down here to Florida, from New York City, all the way over to California. You. We thank God for you because I don't take it lightly. I know you could be doing something else with your time here today. So I'm not here to waste your time. I'm not here to delay your time. But if you came to hear a word from heaven, you're at the right place at the right time right now. Amen. And I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer. I don't want to be long because I'm sure there's things you want to do. And there's a word that you must hear from heaven. Amen. So let me open us up with a word of prayer as you're entering in. You can give your shout outs and thank God. I thank God for you being here. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time to be able to come to lift our hands, to come to open our mouths, to come to bend our knees, to come to say thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for just watching over us, Lord. You, you watched over us as we uh, came out of a last year, as we're entering into this year, Lord, and as we're into a fourth month of this year, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you watched over us as we uh, uh, drew to remembrance of you during this holy week, Lord, uh, thanking you for the triumphal entry on a Palm Sunday, thanking you, Lord, for just knowing that there was a mundane Thursday, thanking you father for a good friday we thank you lord for the resurrection because we know that death could not hold you down hallelujah glory to his name so father right now lord if we just want to say thank you lord thank you for all you've done for us our words are never enough father but that's all what can we render unto you for all you have done for us so we just lift our hands we just open our mouths we just give you praise and we just say thank you lord have your way father have your way in the hearts and minds of where your people have assembled from this day that they may hear from heaven. Lord, let this word do what it was purposed to do from the beginning of the time. Let it set the captives free. Let it, someone be healed, Father. Let someone be delivered through this word today. Let someone have a closer walk with you to this day, Lord. Let the backslider say, Lord, what must I do, Father, just to be in your presence? Father, let this word do what it's purposed to do. I pray now, Father, that as I decrease, your spirit will increase, that you will have your way, Lord, not just in this vessel, but have your way, Father, in this sanctuary, not just this sanctuary, but the sanctuary where your children have assembled this day. Let the spirit move, O oh Lord, as it's moving through this place. Let it move where they are right now, that they may know that they've been in the presence of the true and living God. Father, in all these things, we just give you praise, we give you honor, and we just glorify you, because we declare and we decree that there is no God, no God, greater than our God. You are Jehovah God all by yourself. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're about to do in this time, in this season, in this moment right now. We give you praise, Lord, and we look to you from where all our help come from. So have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way now in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen again, amen again, amen. Hallelujah. Listen, 
I don't want to delay because I know you got things to do. This is a word today. It's a ram of word, a word from heaven. It's going to be a blessing into your life. Amen. This word is going to be a blessing. Not because I'm telling you, because I know what it's going to do. There's not a person who can say that they've been in the presence of God. They heard the word of God and it had no effect on them. They're dead. But you are alive. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And if you're dead in your spirit, your spirit will be alive and resurrected today. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. All right. Listen, uh, my opening scripture is going to come from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 22 to 23. And it's going to be from the New American Standard uh, Bible. Amen. Amen. That may be different than the one that you have that's before you, but we're going to get the same results, the same results that God intended us to get. Amen. Amen. All right, so let me read. Um, Ephesians 1, 22 to 23, New American Standard, and it reads, And he put all things in subjection under his feet, and made him head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. The word of God is blessed and the word of God, we say, Father, let your word be a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his word. Amen? Amen. Listen, I want to take a brief few minutes to speak to you today from the theme of after the resurrection. After the resurrection. Now, we already know that, the, uh, uh, we, as we said, we went through the Holy Week. We already know that, that Jesus uh, 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 had his triumphal entry. We know that Jesus, uh, uh, Judas sought a time to betray him. And we know about the, uh, uh, the foot washing ceremony, the breaking of the bread at the Lord's Supper. Uh, uh, we know about going into the Garden of Gethsemane. We know about the uh, 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 Good Friday. We know about all of that, all of that. But the question I want to ask to you today is what happened after the resurrection. What happened after the resurrection? Listen, the Bible lets us know that when Jesus died, Jesus died on the cross. And in the mind of justice, in the mind of justice, the whole world died with him. The whole world died with Jesus. They died. Why? Because Jesus died for all men. He died for all men. And by saying that, I'm saying that he died for all men. It legally means that all men have been saved. When I'm saying men here, I'm talking universal. A male and female, he created them. I don't want anyone to feel left out. The Bible is not a sexist book. Amen. So I want you to hear when he's saying men, he, uh, uh, Jesus died for all men. We can uh, uh, break, uh, uh, just line it up to say he died for mankind. Amen. He died for mankind that's what man is mean representing universal man mankind and i want some people to if you've been following us i've been telling you all along that uh, uh christianity it didn't begin uh from the cross it didn't start at the cross but uh and it didn't begin with the death of jesus no but christianity began uh uh, uh with the resurrection it was after the resurrection that we have the Christianity. The, we've been called Christian. We were labeled Christians after the resurrection. Um, before that, they were called the way. They were following the way that Jesus was going. So those who were with them were known as those of the way. They followed the way of Jesus. But from the time of the resurrection, after the resurrection, we were known as Christians. And Christianity got its birth. It became birth after the resurrection. When God raised Jesus from the dead, we were raised together with him. And we became a new creation. We became uh, alive uh, uh, to God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know in Romans chapter 8 verses 23 from the New American Standard. And it says, uh, not only that, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons and daughters, the redemption of our body. According to that scripture, Romans 8.23, it lets us know that after the resurrection, we were, uh, have been classified as the new creation, the first fruits of God's redemption. It's after the resurrection. Uh, we've been brought out of death. Uh, uh, not just a physical death, but a spiritual death. And we were brought into a glorious life. Hallelujah. We were brought into a glorious life. Listen, uh, we came alive. We were dead. Dead in our sins. Dead in our trespasses. Dead. Physically dead. Spiritually dead. We were dead men walking. But we became alive with Christ after his resurrection. When he rose, we rose with him. Hallelujah. Listen, when you 
get an understanding of that, knowing that you've been raised together with Christ. When I say you, I'm talking about me as well. Believers, Christians, we've been raised together with Christ. And the Bible lets us know that we're seated with him. We're seated with Jesus in heavenly realms. In the heavenly realms, we're seated with Jesus. The Bible lets us know that therefore, since we're seated in the heavenly places, we should be also seeking those things which are above. We're not sitting here looking to see all that we can get uh, uh, from the world. The Bible lets us know that everything from the world is going to fade away. The Bible lets us know that everything in this world, when the time comes and God calls us out of this world, we're not taking it with us. Therefore, we should be seeking those things which are above. Amen? I am not saying that God doesn't want you to have material things. While you're in this world, yes, there are some things that God wants you to have. But that's not what you should be running after. The things that God wants you to have, he's going to give those. But the things that you should be going after are the spirit spiritual things, those heavenly things, those things that you'll be able to carry with you into heaven. Amen? So listen, if that be true, which it is, God wants us to know that we should have our, 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 our minds, our, we should have our minds made up of consciousness, of, of that, meaning that we're ones right now seated uh, together with Christ in the place of dominion. We're seated right now with Christ in a place of glory. We're in a place of power. We are seated right now with Christ in the heavenlies. Amen? And God wants us to see ourselves seated in a place where there's no darkness. God wants us to see ourselves seated in a place where there's no sickness. We are to see ourselves seated in a place where there's no defeat. Seated in a place where there's no pain. A place of absolute power and authority that has been given to us through Jesus after the resurrection. Hallelujah, glory to God. After the resurrection, you should not see yourself as being defeated. You should not even see yourself in a place of darkness. There's no darkness. Why? Because you are the light of the world. You have that marvelous light inside of you. There's no sickness in you. Why? Jesus bore it all for you. Listen, listen. I don't want to be little because some people may be going, with, going through some things right now. But in reality... You have to be able to realize that this, your, uh, the Bible lets us know that whatever it is that you're going through, even if it's medically, it's a light affliction. Meaning that what? In a twinkling of an eye, it's over. You may feel like it's going on forever, but that's why God lets us know that one day that he sees us is like a thousand years. But to us, it's forever. Can you imagine going through what you're going through for a thousand years? Don't even think about it. Amen? All right, so listen. God wants us to see ourselves seated in a place where there's no darkness, there's no sickness, there's no defeat, there's no pain, there's no, 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 nothing that was going on where God wants us to see ourselves, but in a place of absolute power and authority. The Bible lets us know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. He's seated at the right hand of power. He's seated at the right hand of majesty. Amen. That means that Jesus has the authority over all creation. He created everything, so he should have power. He should have reign. He should have rule. And the Bible lets us know that Jesus has authority over all creation. Jesus has authority over all heaven and earth. He has the authority. Amen? But guess what? Since... We sit with Jesus. Hallelujah. We sit with Jesus in the heavenly realms, in the realms of power and the realms of dominion and the realm of majesty. We're seated with Jesus. So, so if you can get that, if you get that comprehension, your consciousness of this now, you're also being able to understand that, listen, your life is no longer the same after the resurrection because you have received power. You have received dominion. You have received majesty. And it's not a place that you're looking to get to. It's a place that you're already seated in. You're seated in the heavenlies right now with Jesus. The Bible makes it plain to us here in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 from the New Life Version. And it says this, God raised us up from the death when he raised up Christ Jesus. He, talking about God, has given us a place with Christ in the heavens. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have to be able to see yourself the way God sees you, positioned in a place where God placed you. You have to see yourself that. God resurrected Jesus from the dead. And God gave, when he raised Jesus from the death of sin, God also uh, lifted us up. He lifted up uh, us into a place of glory along with Christ. If you are still 
uh, have a sinful mindset, you no longer need to have that. Don't let the devil shame you into thinking that you're still a sinner. Even if you say, yes, I'm a sinner saved by grace, but then you have to also remember, you are already there. God allowed Jesus to redeem us. We've been redeemed from the curse of sin. We've been redeemed from the curse of death. Because when God raised up Jesus, we were raised right up with him. We were raised up with him. Hey, listen. I don't want uh, uh, somebody, uh, a new convert or, or somebody on their way to hear this now. And when you hear this raising up, thinking that uh, uh, the rapture had already taken place. No, there's a difference between that. And you have to be able to understand that when, when Jesus comes back for the second time in the physical, that's when we're going to be called up to meet him. We're going to be called up to meet him. When I say physical, it's not really in his physical body because he's going to be called up uh, in, the air, in the air. We're going to be called up to meet him. So it's going to still be a spiritual, uh, um, uh, 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 the rapture is going to take place. But we're not talking about a rapture. We're talking about after the resurrection. We're talking about already being uh, 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 raised up from a death. A death, the Bible lets us know, a death of sin. A death of even death. Because if Jesus were not raised, then what would we really have to look forward to? What would we have to look forward to? The Bible lets us know as I just read it. Listen, God raised us up from death when he raised up Jesus Christ. And when he raised up Jesus, he's given us a place with Jesus in the heavens. God resurrected Jesus from the dead and God uh, has raised us up from the death of sin. And God lifted us up into a place of of glory alongside Christ. Hallelujah, glory to God. Listen, in Romans chapter uh, 6, verse 4, from the New American Standard, it tells us this. Therefore, we have been buried with him, talking about Jesus. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the death, from the dead, through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. Do you realize what that scripture lets us know? That scripture is telling us, my brothers and sisters, that scripture is telling us that we became new creatures in Christ Jesus. We became new creatures alive to God. And with that uh, new, cre new creation, we became a transcendent life. We're no longer what we were, but we transcended into a new life into a new creature, a new creature. The new creation is a product of the resurrection. It's a product of his, Jesus, resurrection. And because of that, we have been brought out of spiritual death into life, into a new life. Amen? This is why God doesn't want you to see yourself um, in darkness. God doesn't want you to see yourself as defeated. God doesn't want you to, but he wants you to see yourself in a place of glory. He wants you to see yourself seated in a place of majesty. He wants you to see yourself seated in a place of absolute power, power, power. Listen, we have, you and I, believers, Christians all over the world, we have been raised together with Christ and seated with him in heavenly realms. Therefore, the Bible says that we should not seek those, uh, uh, we should be seeking those things which are of above. Don't spend so much time getting caught up into the material things, trying to keep up with the Joneses and the essays and whoever else it may be. Keep up with Jesus. Keep up with the things that God wants to present to you. Amen? Because those are the things that the, that, that, that the Bible lets us know that they're moth and rust won't it won't fade away it won't fade away the things that god has to give you and the, you know the things that you thinking that god has to give you majority of the time we thinking it's always something uh, uh material but god wants to give you some spiritual things in the form of giftings he wants to give you giftings the giftings that the world may not see in a physical but you operate on it you have it within you, and you operate in that gifting in a spiritual realm. And when you do it in a spiritual realm, it's now manifested in the natural. It's manifested in your position as a manager on your job. It's manifested in your position as a, a, a giver of gifts, 
of, of, of a sower of into the church is manifested into the gifts of your health ministry because you want to help everything that's going. So God gives you these things. Amen. And it's something that you don't see on the, on, on the shelf in the store. The gift that God wants to give you. So that's why he lets us know that we are not we should not be seeking the things uh, 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 of the world, but to set our mind or seek those things which are above. Seek the things that God wants to give you so that we can uh, direct and move this world that we're living in, in the path, in the place that God is expecting us to do it. Through what? Through the power and the authority that's been given to you. God is expecting you to do that. Listen, the Bible tells us in Colossians 2, uh, excuse me, Colossians 3, 2 from the New American Standard Bible, it tells us this. Set your mind on things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. Not on things on the earth. And that's what the problem is. Too many of us want to really hold on to everything that we think that we can obtain here while we're on this earth realm. Because we believe God that Jesus was resurrected. We believe God that Jesus tells us when, uh, where I go, there I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. We believe all of that. That, that Jesus says that I prepared uh, in my father's house are many mansions or many rooms, whatever the version is. And I prepared one for you. You believe that. But yet and still you don't, you're not ready to go to receive that. You want to get all that you want to get while you're here. You believe that there's something better, but not right now, Lord. Don't call me yet. No, not, 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 not yet. Because there's still some material things that I want to be able to obtain before you call me out of this uh, 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 earth realm. Because you know what he says. You, I want to believe that you are a believer that knows that there's a better place than what you've seen here on earth. But you're not ready to be uh, uh, experience that part of the trans transition life. You want to still be able to be here and obtain everything that you can while you're here on this level. But that's why the Bible lets us know that we are not to set our minds uh, on the things on the earth. But to set our minds on the things that are above. By setting our, your mind, he means that we're to have a consciousness of one who's born from above. And one who's seated together with Christ in the place of dominion, in a place of glory, and in a place of power. This is the consciousness. This is the renewing of your mind that God wants you to be able to see. No longer are we to be held and running after the things of this world. God has promised us so much greater than the things of this world world. But some of us, we are not ready to uh, transition away from this world. We forget the, the, the scriptures or, or, or the words that tell us that we're just pilgrims passing through. Yeah, we're passing through, Lord, but I want to be able to hold on to this and hold on to that. You're sounding like uh, Reuben and the half-tribe of Manassas when they were coming uh, out of the wilderness, going into the promised land. And they told Joshua, they said, Joshua, we don't want to go. We, we're, we're good here. Uh, on this side of the Jordan. Why? And this is what God wants us to see. Don't get caught up into this side of the Jordan. There's something greater for you. Set your mind. Have your, uh, uh, set your minds on the things that are above and not the things that are on the earth. Amen? Listen. If you get an understanding of that in so many words, uh, uh, he's, God is wanting us to see that we're to let the things of God, the heavenly uh, uh, kingdom to which we've been born. Meaning what? You've been born again. I hope you've been born again. If you've been born again, you're saying that now you are a new creature, a new creation, and a new life has been given to you. And by being born, you're uh, more than just the, you're, you're to go after, more than just the things of the world, which will, which will, not because I say so, but because God tells us. The things of this world will fade away. The things of this world will rust away. The things of this world will not go into heaven. They will not. They will not. Listen. You got to remember, we're talking about after the resurrection, when the stone was rolled away. We already know all of that. But the Bible lets us know that when the stone was rolled away, that Jesus did not take those grave clothes with him. Oh, you remember they wrapped him in, uh, 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 Joseph of Arthea and uh, uh, Nicodemus wrapped him in all the spices and, 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 and the clothing and everything. But the Bible lets us know when the stone was rolled away, the clothing was sitting right there. Which means what? Which means Jesus did not need those things of the world. No, he didn't. 
and you and I won't need a meal. Oh, I know you don't want to hear this, but when you stretched out there in that casket looking with your best on, that's the last that they're going to see because God has already got something else for you and it's better than what the best that they thought they saw of you. Amen? So listen, listen, listen. God wants to let us know that because of the resurrection, we occupy the same position of authority, the same uh, position of authority with Jesus. Meaning what? Meaning that, let's just, in a legal term, Jesus gave us the power of authority. He have, uh, excuse me, the power of attorney. We have the power of attorney to act as Jesus or to act in Jesus' place here on earth. And by having the power of a, a, a attorney, when you have a power of attorney, you're legally able to do what the uh, inscriptions have given you permission to do. If I wrote you into my will and I gave you the power of attorney to exercise authority or exercise power, then you are able to do that. And there's not a court of law that can stop you from doing what I've given you the power of attorney to do. And that is what Jesus wants us to know. After the resurrection, he's given us power of, of attorney. His words we have power, we have authority, and we're able to do all that he's called us to do. There were some things that they did when Jesus was here, but when Jesus left, he's given it to us now. And he's expecting us to exercise the power of eternity, the power and the authority to do what he's called us to do after the resurrection, after the resurrection. Listen, I want you to realize this uh, awesome uh, uh, privilege that we have to be a power of attorney over the words of Jesus. The awesome privilege that we have to uh, receive power and might and dominion and majesty. The awesome power or, 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 or the privilege that we have to be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That is a privilege that's not Actually, I want to say it's not given to everyone, but it is. But very few will take it. Very few will take it. Very few. But we have it. We have it. We sit in a place far above all principality. We sit in a place above all power, might, and dominion. We sit in a place, hallelujah, that's the God lets us know that we sit in a place that's far above every name that is named. Not only in this world, but in the world also which is to come. We sit in that place. We function in a place of glory. We function in a place of power. We function in a place of authority and dominion. Separated from the lasting effects of sin. Separated from corruption. Separated from darkness. We're separated from everything in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is why he doesn't want us to see ourselves defeated. He doesn't want us to see ourselves in darkness. You are the light of the world. After the resurrection, these things have been made known to you. You're seated and highly exalted with Jesus. Listen, in Philippians 2. 9 through 11, it tells us this. It says, For this reason also, God highly exalted him. Talking about Jesus. For this reason also, God highly exalted Jesus and bestowed upon him, Jesus, the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those, uh, uh, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and of that of every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God didn't tell us that every knee might bow. I think every knee should bow. No, he tells us, makes it plain that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. It's going to bow. It's going to bow. The knees in heaven are already bowing. The knees on the earth, some are already bowing. And those that are under the earth, hallelujah, glory to God, they are going to bow at the name of Jesus. They're subject 
to the name of Jesus. Satan is subject to the name of Jesus. And every demon that's connected with him is subject to the name of Jesus. They're subject. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus was raised from the dead. And when he was raised, God lets us know that he's given uh, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has power over all things and there uh, over all three dominions. What dominions? The name of Jesus has power over dominion of heaven. The name of Jesus has power over the dominion of earth. And the name of Jesus has dominion. He has dominion over the power in the earth, which is hell. Jesus has dominion over hell. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why the Bible wants us to know. You should already know this. This should be your own personal confession. You shouldn't even need to read the Bible to know that Jesus is Lord and Master over all things. You should not need the Bible to tell you that. You should know that because of your relationship with Jesus. You should know that Jesus is Lord and Master over heaven, over earth, and in the earth. He is Lord and Master. And it doesn't matter who it is. Their knee is going to bow. I don't care if they were dead over 100,000 years ago. They are going to bow and they are going to confess as their knee is bent that Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Listen. From the time Jesus began to reign, from the time he was raised, uh, 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 he began to reign through the church. He, talking about Jesus, Jesus gave us power of attorney to use his name. If you're able to comprehend that, Jesus gave us power of attorney to use his name. That means we have to exercise the authority in his name. And when we exercise the authority in Jesus' name, as long as you use the name of Jesus in the earth, Satan and his dominions of darkness, they cannot run this world. There's no way they can run the world. Because if they, you say, well, they are, and they're uh, raising hell everywhere they go. It's because we, we, as Christians, are not exercising the power and the authority that has been given to us. We're not. Because when we do, it's impossible for Satan and his demons to rule this world. It's impossible. Why? Because they cannot coexist with that two. There's, listen, there's no such thing as two authorities. There's one authority. And we've already seen now that Jesus is Lord and master over heaven, over the earth, and in the earth. And by him being Lord and master over that, by him giving us the power and dominion, he lets us know that we have the power of attorney to do things in Jesus' name. So if you take the power and authority and do things in Jesus' name, then how is it that Satan can rule this world? How? How is it he's able to rule? How is it that he, because those two authorities can't not coexist? If Jesus is in you, he tells you that no one can bind up the strong man that's within you. Satan cannot possess your body. Now, he may come and give you some thought, uh, 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 thought consciousness and have you thinking away from the word of God. But he cannot occupy that space that Jesus is in in you because he is unbindable. You cannot bind up the strong man of Jesus. You cannot. So what that tells us is this. If we do what God tells us to do and use what God has given to us, Satan cannot reign and rule this earth realm. No, he cannot. And now you may sit and say, well, we don't have everything that Jesus has. The devil is a liar. You the same one running around here talking about the greater works you shall do and greater works we shall do and this, that, and the other and the power. And the listen, do what God tells you to do and you'll keep Satan in check. The Bible lets us know. Listen. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I want someone to realize this. Listen, the power uh, that the Antichrist is going to exercise or that he's exercising, it's going to give him absolute authority because we're not doing anything about it. Yes, sad to say. So right now he has absolute authority. And by that, he, he's doing what he wants to do. Now he has absolute authority, but we have absolute power in the earth. As believers, he may have authority because he has what God has given him. 
as you and I have what God has given us. But when those two things come together, we have to be able to be the ones to see that our absolute uh, 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 power trumps his authority. His authority. Well, overseas, he's the prince of the air. He can listen. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you understanding about the prince of the air and the power and the authority that you have. The Bible lets us know this. Because we're in Christ, because what Jesus has given us, his name, his power, his authority, we have dominion over all nations in the name of Jesus. Psalm 22, 30, excuse me, Psalm 22, verse 28 from the New American Standard. It tells us this. It says, for the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. The Lord wants us to know that no matter what it looks like, no matter how the media wants to sway it to you on your nightly news, no matter how they want to twist the narrative, you are expected to exercise the power of your power over the Antichrist in the name of Jesus. You have power over Satan and his demons in the name of Jesus. Listen, before we received salvation, we went the way of the world. We were under the sway of the wicked one. And when I'm saying that, I'm saying we were moving the way the world was moving. At every command of Satan, we were moving. We were doing what he wanted us to do, we were a puppets on his string. But after receiving salvation, hallelujah, glory to God, after the resurrection, you and I, as believers, we were given absolute power and dominion over the prince of the air, a.k.a. Satan. We were given power over him. Oh, let me help you out. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, 2, and this is from the, uh, the Living Bible. It tells us this, you went along with the crowd and were just like all others, full of sin, obeying Satan, the mighty prince of the power of the air, who is at work right now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. We were just like that. We were. We went along with the crowd, just like all the others. We were full of sin, obeying Satan, just like all the others. We were listening to the uh, mighty prince of the power of the air, who's still at work right now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. They're against Jesus. When you hear that, that word, that term, the expression, the power of the air, in that scripture, it refers to an atmosphere. It refers to a behavior uh, indicative of some quality or trait. Uh, uh, like you say, uh, uh, un, uh, the air of unbelief. We were under an air of unbelief. Uh, it could also be represented as the, the power of the air could be represented as the uh, atmosphere in a region describing something foul, describing something evil or dark place. Uh, it can be described, uh, its works are described as the, uh, from the prince or the power of the air, who is Satan. And that's why God doesn't want you to see yourself in a dark place. He wants you to see yourself defeating the prince of the air. Now, you somebody sitting here saying, well, well, you know, how can that be? How can it be that we can uh, uh, defeat the prince of the air? We don't even see him. Listen, listen, that's the problem. You have to be at a point where you're able to know that you believe and you know what you know that you know through the word of God. We're to exercise your power over his, Satan's, influence in this world. There are churches that are under the influence. There are people who are under his influence. There are families, individuals who have been influenced by the uh, prince of the air. There are cities who have been influenced. There are nations. There are countries. There are people who have been influenced by the prince of the air and some 
are not even knowing it. But you, the scales have fallen and you're able to see now that this is something that's going on. And God wants us to know, hallelujah, glory to God, through the teaching of God's word, the apostles, they, they made it, uh, uh, the people of their time, they made them understand only through the Holy Spirit were that they could uh, rise above the spirit of their environment and break the hold or break the power of the prince of the power of the air. Only through the Holy Spirit are you able to reign and rule and break Satan's hold over your life, your family, your city, your nation, your state, your country, your governance. Only through the Holy Spirit are you able to do such a thing. Only through that. If you're trying to operate on your own unction, your own power, you're going nowhere fast. Nowhere. And Satan's sitting there having a good time entertaining you as you entertain him. And that's just what's going on. The prince of the power of the air. Talking about Satan. He's the prince of the air. And he brings, you know where he's at because he brings his uh, poverty. He brings poverty into a place. Uh, he brings a feeling of inadequacy into a place. He causes destructions in places. He brings hatred into places. He brings racism into places. He brings killings and mass murders and suicides into places. He brings wickedness and violence into places. And if you say yes, overseer, I understand what you're saying because these are the places and things that are happening all over the world because the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one over the power of the prince of the air. But you and I, hallelujah, glory to God, we have to be able to see what the power and the authority after the resurrection that has been given to us and do something about it. God is expecting you to do something about it. The prince of the air, he, he, he's right now, he's running through families. He's running through nations. He's running through cities. He's running through governments. He's causing destructions all around the world. He's doing it. And you know it because you see it. You hear about droughts. You hear about famines. You hear about uh, all this wickedness that's going on in the world today. And you think it's by accident? You think it's by circumstance? No. The world is under the sway of the wicked one. But God, hallelujah, he has given us what we need to do to defeat Satan. The Bible lets us know uh, Isaiah chapter 30, 30, 31 from the King James Version. It says this. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod. When the scriptures tell you in that verse or the verse we're talking about the Assyrian, the Assyrian is prophetic speaking about the Antichrist spirit or the spirit of the Antichrist. And it says, for through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod. The voice of the Lord is uh, spoken here saying that it's the word of God spoken uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the word of God, the voice of the Lord, the spoken word of God, what is that word? We've already talked about it. We're talking about the rhema word of God. The rhema. So, when the rhema of God is spoken, the Bible lets us know that the rhema is the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. This is why we can't fight that devil with the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We have to use what God has given us. We have to use what's been tried. We have to been used what's been tested. We have to been used. We have to use what's been bringing forth victory. You can't do this thing with your own merits and method. The Bible lets us know that through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down with the rod, smote with a rod. The, the voice of the Lord is the rhema. The rhema is the sword of the spirit. When you open your mouth, you release that sword. And Satan now has no choice but to accept his defeat. Hallelujah. Listen, the voice of the Lord is the rhema of God. It's the spoken word word of God through the mouth 
our mouths, when we open our mouths and we start to speak the rainbow word of God, what do you think happens to Satan? I'll tell you. He's discomforted. He is upset. He is already throwing hissies right now because the rhema is being released. The rhema, the sword of the spirit is being released in this atmosphere. And not just here today, but wherever you are, you have that within you. And when you open your mouth, you release the rhema of God and you start to take back that which the enemy stole. You take it back with the word of God and your lips, with the word of God coming out of your mouth, you destroy the activities of the prince of the power of the air. When we open our mouth and we release the rhema, the power that God has given to us through his word, we paralyze, we influence, uh, uh, we paralyze and we influence uh, 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 Satan. And we, when I paralyze him, we, he's paralyzed. He's in, because we paralyze his influence. We paralyze his activities that are taking place around the world. Paralyzing means we bring a stop to it. We halt it right where it's at. Stop it in its tracks right there. When we do that, you do that in your city. You do that in your nation. You do that in your family. You do it in your personal life. You do it in your environment. When you start to release that rhema that's in you, you paralyze, you put a stop to Satan and his activities, and the prince of the air will not exist in this atmosphere. That's why the two cannot coexist. If we do what God tells us to do, you'll see it. You will see it. Listen, Satan is the prince of the air, right? And and I want somebody to realize, God wants you to realize, that even though he's the prince of the air, he has no power. He has no power when it comes to Jesus. You remember, Jesus says, the, uh, soon, uh, 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 the prince, uh, uh, Satan is coming, the time when he's coming, and he has nothing in me. He has no power. He has no claims. He cannot bring any accusations against him. He has been defeated by Jesus, Satan. And because he's been defeated by Jesus, he's defeated by you and I when we use, when we exercise the name of Jesus. You got to remember, uh, 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 because listen, I want people to realize, God wants you to realize that Satan has no power. I know you believe that he's the prince of the air and we don't see which direction he's coming from. But you have to remember that, listen, Jesus also put Satan in check. And everything that Jesus did, you and I talk about the greater works, this is what he's expecting us to do. The Bible lets us know. You remember when Jesus got into a boat with his disciples? Uh, I think this is in Matthew chapter 8. Uh, um, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and they followed him and then they, they came across a violent storm and the Bible lets us know that while I was on the see uh, Jesus was in the boat and he was sleeping and the waves came over and they began to take over the boat and the disciples came and they woke Jesus up saying to him uh, uh, save us Lord for we're perishing you remember that in Matthew chapter 8 verse 26 and 27 from the New American Standard Bible Jesus spoke to them and he said why are you afraid you men of little faith then he Jesus got up rebuked the winds and the sea and it became perfectly calm the men were amazed and said, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Hallelujah, glory to God. When was the last time someone said that to you? When was the last time someone said that about you? What manner of person, being politically correct, are you that even the winds and the sea, the waters obey you? What, what manner of man are you? What, what matter? When was the last time somebody said that about you? And, and listen, I understand. I know someone's going to sit here and say, well, that's Jesus. And Jesus had all that power. Jesus was able to do that. Let me remind you something. The Bible also tells us that uh, uh, God uh, uh, gives you power. And guess where Satan got his power from? You got it. God. God also gave Satan power. But the power that you have, the authority that you and I have, it trumps, it outdoes Satan's power. Because why? Because, listen, Satan can't stop you when you do what God tells you to do with the weapons that God has given you to use. Open your mouth and release that rhema. Release that sword of the Spirit and put Satan in check. Put him in check. Listen, God gave Satan power, but he gave you power also. He gave it to you. The Bible lets us know, you know, uh, 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 um, 
uh, uh, that, that's the same power that we have. Because I know people, they, like I said, someone, that, that they'll say, well, you know, that's, that's Jesus, and Jesus had power over Satan. But, but I want to let you know that Satan cannot stop you either. You got to remember when Ezekiel, uh, here you go, um, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 8 and 9. This is from the Good News Translation. The Bible says this, God said to me, mortal man, prophesy to the wind. Tell the wind that the sovereign Lord commands it to come from every direction to breathe into these dead bodies and to bring them back to life. Verse 10, so I prophesied as I had been told. Breath entered the bodies and they came to life and stood up. There were enough of them to form an army. Hallelujah, glory to God. Did you hear God call Ezekiel mortal man? He says, God said to me, mortal man, prophesy to the wind. Do you know why God called him mortal man? That's to let you and I know that Ezekiel wasn't an angel. Ezekiel was not even the son of man. But Ezekiel was a willing vessel who God uh, uh, could use to do what God told him to do. And Ezekiel lets us know that he got the results that God intended him to get. He says, so I prophesy as I have been told. Hallelujah. And guess what? He said, breath entered in the bodies and they came to life and they stood up. He did what God told him to do. He did. He used what God gave him to use. He did what God told him to do and he got the results that God intended him to get. What's your excuse? What is your excuse, mortal man? You cannot sit here and say, well, you know, uh, uh, he was a supernatural. No. The Bible lets us know that God referred to Ezekiel as a mortal man. He was not an angel. He was not the son of man. But he spoke to Satan, who's the prince of the air. And he said what? He said, uh, uh, more, uh, 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 tell, God told him, tell the wind that the sovereign Lord commands. The sovereign Lord, Yahweh, the Lord God Almighty. You tell Satan that the Lord, Yahweh, the sovereign Lord commands you to breathe in this direction. Hallelujah. And he tells us from every direction, these, the winds blew. You can command Satan to blow out of your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have to be able to realize this is no supernatural mumble jumble stuff. This is the word of God. And you have that same power and authority. So what do we learn? Listen, I see time is moving. I got to get up out of here. So what do we learn after the resurrection? I'm glad you asked. The Bible lets us know that in Mark chapter 9, verses 11, excuse me, 9, uh, 11, excuse me, Mark chapter 9, verses 9 through 11 from the New American Standard Bible, it tells us this. Now, after he had risen, talking about the resurrection, talking about Jesus. Now, after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to all those who had been with him, all the disciples. Mary Magdalene went to all the disciples who were mourning and weeping, mourning and weeping. Why? Because Jesus was dead. And when she, and when they had heard that Jesus was alive, when they heard that he was alive, and that he had been seen by her, by Mary, they refused to believe it. They refused to believe that Jesus was alive. They refused it. The Bible lets us know that after the resurrection, in Mark chapter 9, verse 14 and 15, New American Standard Bible, it says, later he, talking about Jesus, later Jesus appeared unto the eleven disciples uh, themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he reprimanded them. Some version says he rebuked them. Why would Jesus rebuke them? He rebuked them. He reprimanded them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. Why? Because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen from the dead. You got to remember, there was also two on the road of Emmaus. They came back and told all the others that we've seen Jesus, but nobody wanted to believe. They didn't want to believe. And then Jesus lets us know after the resurrection, in verse 15, he tells us this. He says unto them, go into all the world, go unto all the world, 
preach the gospel to all creation. After the resurrection, verses 9, Mark 9, 17 and 18 from the New American Standard Bible, Jesus tells us this. He says, these signs will accompany those who believed. Hallelujah, glory to God. You have to believe. You have to believe. They didn't believe, but now that they've seen him, now that they put their finger in his holes, now that they've seen him reclining at the table with them, now that they've been rebuked, but you don't have to go through that. Jesus lets us know that these signs will accompany those who believe. Those who have believed in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will might be covered. Is that what the word of God says? No. He said that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So after the resurrection, we also find out this. We find out what? That 1 Corinthians 4.20, it lets us know, for the kingdom of God is not in words, but it's in power also. Not in words only, but it's in power. Power that is demonstrated through those who believe. The tremendous miracles, signs, and wonders performed by Jesus and the apostles were written in the Bible to inspire us here today, in this year that we're living in, the year of our Lord. Jesus wants us to know that as this was written to inspire us, to let us know that we can do the same thing through the same power, through the same spirit. Hallelujah, glory to God. So listen, after the resurrection, you receive the power of attorney to do what God has commissioned you to do. Go and exercise your power and authority. Start taking back your neighborhood. Start taking back your community. Take back everything that the devil stole after the resurrection. It's our responsibility to do what God is expecting you to do. Amen? Amen. God bless you all. Listen, I hope, I pray that you will if you did not know Jesus, you will come to know him now. If you did know him, but you stepped away, I pray that you begin to have a closer walk with him as of now. If you didn't know him, all you have to do, Jesus just told you, for those who believe, you have to believe. You have to believe that Jesus was God's only begotten son. You have to believe that he came and died a sinner's death. You have to believe that when he was dead, that he was resurrected up, God raised him up, and guess what? He's seated in the heavenlies, and he's coming back again, but until he does, you're seated there with him. Do you believe? Do you believe? And if you're saying, overseer, yes, I believe, then you receive salvation today. You don't have to wait another minute. And don't let the devil come to twist your mind to make you think that you don't have power and authority over him. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave. Listen, you, hallelujah. Glory to God. I see time is moving. I just want to thank you for coming to fellowship with us here today. I pray that you know that after the resurrection, you have been given power of attorney to exercise the power and the authority that's been given to you. Amen. Let us pray before we leave. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for your divine presence, Lord. We thank you for knowing that after the resurrection, we have been classified as a new creation in you. Father, we thank you for knowing that after the resurrection, we have been considered the uh, first fruits of, God, of your redemption. Father, we thank you for knowing that as you brought Jesus out of death, Lord, you brought us out of a spiritual death also. Father, we thank you for knowing that you've given us power of attorney to exercise power and dominion over Satan, Lord. We don't have to wait until we're dead and gone, but we can start exercising that power and, a, 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 a power and authority over his life right now. And we can send Satan back to hell. We can uh, command the winds to blow out of our life. Command that power. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that death could not hold you down. We thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Death could not hold you down. Father, we bless you and we praise you in Christ Jesus' name. Continue to have your way in every area of our lives. For your purpose and your glory is my prayer. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen again. Again, you know how to reach us. You see all the, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, everything is being laid out. I'm just caught up right now. I just thank God. You know how to reach us. We thank God for you reaching us. We thank God for you coming to fellowship with us. And as you go through the rest of this week, as you go through knowing, know that as Jesus was raised up, we were raised up also. And don't forget to make time for God because God has truly made time for you. Amen. Amen. If you are being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation or a contribution, please go to the link below. Thank you and may God richly bless you.